I'd like to talk about my belief system. My path doesn't really fit the general accepted definitions and um, I consider myself an animist, uh, though not in the traditional sense. Uh, in most respects I do things differently and I view things differently and my path is still evolving so it's essentially I can say it's an earth-based solitary pagan path. Um, I revere the deities of nature slightly maybe differently from the way most people do. Uh, I'm going to be making a series of videos about the deities to discuss some of their attributes and um, as I have come to understand them. Uh, but in this video I won't be going into much detail there uh, in any real depth. I'm just going to try to give a general basic outline of my belief system. And um, also my rituals are very different from others I've seen and participated in. So I'm going to be making videos about uh, my ritual structure and symbolism. Anyway, in the meantime, <clears throat> I'll just say a few words about my path. Um, above all else, my path is ecology-centered as opposed to self-centered. Uh, it's ecocentric as opposed to anthropocentric. So I, I'm fine with personal growth and self empowerment, but Homo sapiens dominates my brothers and sisters of the animal and vegetable kingdoms. They need it more than I do. So it's less about what the gods can do for me personally and more about developing a reverence for the nature deities and accordingly a reverence for all life which includes you and me and our ecosystems. Um, <clears throat> mainstream anthropocentric religions teach that mankind has dominion over other, all other creatures but this indoctrination has led to mass destruction of ecosystems and exploitation of organisms by industries causing untold suffering ostensibly in the name of science but truly it's based on an obsession obsessive compulsion to expand industry which is driven by greed so spiritually there needs to be a change it needs to be compassion love and respect towards our brothers and sisters of all species. So my belief system, um, there is no such thing as the supernatural, uh, Latin super equals above, beyond and natura is nature so Nothing exists outside nature. I don't, well, at least that's my belief anyway. Uh, reincarnation? I don't believe it in the same way as most people do. I don't, I don't hold the traditional standard view. Um, I don't really see myself coming back after I've died. Uh, I think I look at nature and, and it's what I see. I respect other people's experiences and beliefs and I don't discount anything. But personally, the way I see it is <laughs> nature deities exist because nature exists. And they are immortal within the eternal evolution of nature. The great works of the sun, the moon, the earth, the winds and the rains ensure natural selection. So reincarnation to me is the reproduction and evolution of species. Immortality is the continuation of life. Not necessarily any particular life. I don't see myself as immortal, 
but through my descendants and if I was unable to have children, the human species, through their descendants, we keep going. Um, any? Mm. So, I was thinking reincarnation can be illustrated in the um, in terms of the seasonal effects on the vegetable kingdom. For example, the life cycle of cereal crops. When my early ancestral family first learnt that they could gather wild barley on the hillsides, um, in the process, many seeds fell to the ground. So, in the springtime, the, um, the spirit of John Barleycorn has returned. So what reappears is physically different, but from a spiritual perspective, the grain holds the spirit of the barley that reappears in the spring. The afterlife, I see the afterlife in much the same way. I see the afterlife mirrored in the phenomenon of the ability of every species to reproduce itself and so ensure its, contingent, its continued existence. So even through evolution, as one form of life becomes another. So, um, and this view, the way I see it, also covers my view of immortality, which is the immortality of life itself through the spirit of all living organisms. So the spirit of my ancestors lives on in me and in my children and grandchildren. Anyway, that's, I guess, the best way I can explain that. Um, so anyway, it's an outline of my path. So f festivals, um, I live in a four season locality and I divide each season into three separate parts and I hold 12 rituals a year based on seasonal changes and other observances. Um, I guess the seasonal changes are only, they're not so defined when you're only looking at one month apart, but they are there. Um, and I feel that this helps me to attune uh, more finely. To, to what's happening and to the nature deities. Um, so I'll, I'll make a separate video on, on my rituals, uh, my observances as well include like the International Day of Peace, World Animal Day, World Environment Day, um, International Mother Earth Day and others. I believe we need to cultivate compassion in our hearts and uh, place an intrinsic value on all living organisms and their natural environment rather than their perceived usefulness to mankind. Uh, as for creation myth, no, <laughs> I don't have a creation myth. Um, I can't create a creation myth. I think that belief in a created universe demands a belief in a time when a universe didn't exist. But time can't exist without a universe in which to exist. And I don't subscribe to a Big Bang or a steady state theory. I don't discount any scientific theory. Um, but even if I were capable of addressing the astrophysicist's scientific calculations, I'm really fairly disnumerate. But if I could, it would still never amount to more than a theory. And as for multiverses, well, put them all together and what do you get? A universe. <laughs> I just accept that it exists. And it doesn't bother me that I'll never know how it all began. I wouldn't like to live in a universe with no mystery. 
The nature deities, well, now I've said it before, they exist because nature exists. And they are immortal within the eternal evolution of nature. I, I don't need to know how they came into being. It, 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 I'm happy. <laughs> it's really not within my capabilities of understanding and so I don't question it. I, um, I just live in the present. Very zen, I guess. <laughs> you know. So um, I try to live in the moment where all experience is subjective and where everything is more than just the sum of its constituent parts and where everything that exists is the embodiment of its spiritual being. We live in a hierarchical, multifaceted universe, from the subatomic levels and below to superclusters and beyond. And all these levels of being are equally sacred. Everything has spirit. Every cell of our bodies, our intestinal flora, gut bacteria, fingernails, hair, teeth, and this is why in contagious magic, such as practiced in voodoo um, traditions, whatever a person intentionally does to a part of a thing affects the whole thing. Um, so anyway, I guess I've covered my overall view of spirit in the universe, in the world, in, in everything. Um, now I'd like to talk about, I'm going to have to talk about the kingdoms because they're not, these are my spiritual kingdoms that I acknowledge. Um, I, I don't know how I, where I first got the, how I came to think this way, but in the world of science and biology, divisions and subdivisions have to be imposed in order that they can put um, all organisms in their correct subcategories. So um, in 1758, Carl Linnaeus, or Carl von Linné, or I think Carolus Linné, I don't know, he had various names, but Linnaeus, as I call him, uh, introduced his three kingdom system, that was the animal, vegetable and mineral kingdoms. And it was very simple, um, it was a, I think Aristotle, a couple of thousand years ago or something, uh, I don't know when, um, but Aristotle came up with the three kingdom system and Linnaeus, um, he worked on that and Anyway, that's all by the by, that's all about biology. Um, today, some biologists use a five kingdom system, some use a six kingdoms, some don't use kingdoms at all. Um, in a spiritual universe, none of this matters because everything is greater than the sum of its parts and spirit takes precedence over labels. So. I acknowledge six spiritual kingdoms. The spirit of a kingdom is so vast and all-encompassing, I can only comprehend it as deity. I'll start with the mineral kingdom. All minerals belong in this kingdom. From dust to rocks, from sediment to sand, from soil to stones, from within the molten core to the outer crust, at the highest level of the mineral kingdom is Mother Earth, the great spirit that dwells within every crystal, every grain of sand, every cave and mountain. She's the great spirit or goddess of the mineral kingdom to whom we return at the end of life. This is, um, I will go into more depth about each deity, but that's, this is um, just the outline. So next I'll talk about the vegetable kingdom. And I have actually talked a lot about the deity of the vegetable kingdom, so I may not um, need to put him in that series. But 
Anyway, the vegetable kingdom, all vegetation belongs in this kingdom. At the highest level is the great spirit of all vegetation. I know him as Viridios, the green man, lord of the plant kingdom, child of Mother Earth, the spirit that dwells within all vegetation. He heals the world, he feeds the world, and as such, I acknowledge him as the savior of the world. The animal kingdom, all animals, including Homo sapiens, belong in this kingdom, and at the highest level is the great spirit of all animals. I know him as Kurnanos, lord of the animal kingdom, the wild spirit dwelling within all animals, and is therefore a close personal deity. I honour him and all my brothers and sisters of the animal kingdom, particularly on World Animal Day, which I observe. In the celestial kingdom, it's the abode of the moon, planets, stars and all other celestial bodies. And because of their profound effects on all the other kingdoms, at the highest level are the sun and the moon the Lord and Lady of the Celestial Kingdom. The Kingdom of Air is the abode of the winds of all directions, not just north, south, east and west. I mean, I, I just, I don't really do my rituals that way. I, I see them, the winds as everywhere really, even when they're at rest. The air is still moving, they're never really completely at rest. Um, the kingdom of water is the abode of life-giving rains. So again, uh, there's so much I could say, but I won't go into it. This is really for, for separate videos. Um, the Invincible Gods, I perceive the sun, moon, earth, winds and rains as the five elemental deities or the Invincible Ones. It's predicted that billions of years from now the sun will die, the earth will die, the moon will die, um, the winds and the rains will die along with them. But knowledge doesn't replace wisdom gained from personal experience and from a spiritual perspective. This will never happen because this life is all I know and all the wonders I experience exist within it. The vulnerable gods, the truly vulnerable deities are Viridius and Kurnamos. Without the five invincible ones, Viridius of the vegetable kingdom would not exist. And without Viridius, Kronanus would not exist. Kronanus of the animal kingdom. We would not exist. So, this, in this natural hierarchy, because it is a hierarchy, but I perceive all the deities as equally sacred, because they're all equally important to life. But now we live in a world dominated by homo sapiens whose hubris causes untold suffering and destruction. It's time to be ecologically aware and recognize the vulnerability of the gods. If we give them their space, the ecosystem will take care of itself. It's wiser than we know. I find it strange that those who adhere to Darwin's theory of evolution should dictate which animals and vegetation should be allowed to live and where they should live and which ones should be destroyed. You know, this plant, oh, you can't grow this plant in your garden, it's on the list. <sighs> if the authorities consider that too many flourish outside their designated borders, they are immediately classed as pests and dealt with accordingly. 
In other words, evolution's natural selection process is being completely stimmied. Now, it concerns me greatly that today's mainstream religions are anthropocentric, person-centered, and that fosters a what's in it for me attitude. They would do well to try honoring a few nature gods. Maybe then it might become acceptable to allow the rivers to clear and to let the forests flourish.